G'day and welcome to the video guide for the Makerverse 2 channel motor driver. In this guide, we're going to learn how to drive small DC motors and stepper motors using a Raspberry Pi Pico. For more information about what a motor driver is and how it works, you can check out our guide on motor drivers versus motor controllers. Let's get started. Out of the box, the Makerverse motor driver does not come with any terminals or pin headers soldered to it, so it's up to you to work out the best solution for your application. Looking at the pins, along the left side, we have a bunch of pins for a connection to a microcontroller and a low power input. And along the right side, we have a bunch of large solder pads that are suitable for five millimeter pitch screw terminals. Along the top, we have a B channel output for a motor, an A channel output for a different motor, and a high power motor voltage input. Let's take a closer look at the logic inputs along the left hand side of the board. The DIRB and DIRA are the direction pins. They control the output voltage polarity on the AMP output channels. And the PWMA and PWMB inputs are the pulse width modulation inputs for the A and B channels respectively. All of these logic pins are compatible with both 3.3 and 5 volt logic. So even though we're using the Raspberry Pi Pico in today's demonstration, this board also works completely fine with Arduinos or Microbits or any other common microcontroller. If you're not sure about what pulse width modulation is, you can check out our guide on digital to analog conversion with the Raspberry Pi. An important note about the left hand side terminals is that the ground connection must be connected to both the motor's power supply and your microcontroller's power supply in order to work correctly. Let's get started with the first real motor driving example. For this example, we're gonna be driving a small DC geared motor and we'll be controlling its speed using pulse width modulation from the Raspberry Pi Pico. To make this example easier to build, I've soldered five millimeter pitch screw terminals to the right side of the motor driver board. Let's get started by making all of the screw terminal connections we need for this example. The motor is gonna be connected to the A plus and A minus outputs, and our four AA battery pack is gonna be connected to the ground and VM terminals. For this code example, we're only going to need to make three connections. We'll start with the ground connection, we'll grab a, a black wire, connect to the ground pin on the motor controller board, and the easiest ground pin to connect to on the Raspberry Pi would probably be the one that is third in from the lower left hand corner. The next connection we're gonna make is the PWM connection. So we'll connect to PWMA on the motor controller board, and the example code in the guide uses pin zero for this signal. The next connection is going to be direction A, so we'll connect from direction A on the motor controller board, and the example in the guide uses pin one for this signal. With all these connections made, it's time to plug in the Raspberry Pi Pico and open up Thonny. If you haven't used the Raspberry Pi Pico with Thonny before, you can check out our guide. The code we need for this example can be found in the guide. If you scroll down to the section entitled Driving Small DC Motors, a little bit below that is a code example. We can copy this and paste it into Thonny. With the code pasted into Thonny, we'll save this file as main.py on the Raspberry Pi Pico. When we press Control R to run this example, the motor will spin in one direction for one second and then spin in the other direction for a second before stopping. Control R. Let's take a quick look at how this code works. We import a few required modules, in particular the PWM and the PIN modules. We create a direction A variable, which is pin number one as an output. And then we create a PWM A variable, which is our PWM object on pin zero. We set the PWM's frequency to one kilohertz. This is a typically fine frequency for small DC motors like this one. And then we set the PWM duty cycle to this 32,768 value. This is a 50% duty cycle. Next, we turn the direction pin on, then sleep one second, so the motor spins in one direction for a second. Then we turn the direction pin off and sleep for another second, so it spins in the opposite direction for one second. Lastly, this line of code here sets the PWM duty cycle to zero, which effectively just turns the motor off. As a quick remix of this code, let's change it so that the pulse width modulation duty cycle slowly ramps up and then slowly ramps down. In order to do this, we're going to get rid of, well, most of this code. Then we're going to turn direction A on, and then we'll make ourselves a for loop that counts from zero to roughly 64,000. This for loop is going to run in jumps of 200. By choosing jumps of 200 in this loop and a delay of 10 milliseconds, it means it goes from zero to full scale PWM in about a second or two. Next, we're gonna place a second loop below that, which does the opposite. This loop counts from 64,000 down to zero in increments of minus 200. In other words, we speed the motor up slowly, then we slow the motor down slowly. Pressing Control R, we'll watch this happen.
For the next example, we're going to look at how to drive bipolar stepper motors with the two-channel motor driver. If you haven't used a bipolar stepper motor before, you can go check out our guide on controlling stepper motors with the Arduino. This style of motor has two coils. One of them is going to be connected to the A output and the other will be connected to the B output. You don't need to be too careful about the polarity. If you swap the polarity on one coil, you'll just change the motor direction. In order to drive a bipolar stepper motor, we need to make two more connections to make four connections total. We'll take a wire and connect the PWMB input of the motor driver to pin two on the Raspberry Pi. Lastly, we'll take another wire and connect the direction B input on the motor driver to GP3 on the Raspberry Pi. In order to make this stepper motor turn around, we'll go back to the guide, find the section driving bipolar stepper motors, and a little bit below that, there's a code example that we can copy into Thony. This particular code example is reasonably long. That's not because driving stepper motors is hard, but because I've included a class for driving stepper motors inside this code. For now, we're just gonna hit Control R and make sure everything works. Let's take a look at a couple of the highlights from this code example. Towards the top of the example, you'll see the bipolar stepper class definition. The only thing we should really pay attention to here is that the default pin assignments are on 0, 1, 2, and 3 for the PWM and direction pins. Scrolling down all the way to the bottom, you'll see we create a stepper variable from our bipolar stepper class. Then we step forward 100 times with a 20 millisecond sleep in between each step. And then right at the bottom, we run this return home function. Return home just makes the stepper motor spin to where it started. For a quick remix of this code, let's change the forward step function call to a backward step function call. And then running the code again, you'll see the stepper motor spins in the opposite direction before going back to where it started. The last thing we're going to look at is the motor driver board's current limiting capability. You might want to use this to protect the motor or the battery in the case of a stall, or sometimes you might need to do this for a stepper motor. Current limiting is enabled by soldering a potentiometer to the provided solder pads. This solder pad in the upper corner of the motor driver board can accept little trim pots or 10 turn pots or this thumb screw unit that we're using today. In order to set the current limit with a voltmeter, a special test point has been provided that measures 1.1 volts for each amp that the motor is allowed to draw. In order to take this measurement, we'll grab our voltmeter, have it set to volts, put the black lead on the ground pin and the positive lead on the specially provided test point. With the voltage at that set point at about 110 millivolts, we'd expect the current through the motor to be limited to about 120 milliamps. In order to confirm that set point, we've put our multimeter into current measuring mode and connected it between one of the output terminals and one of the motor coils, and we're measuring close to 120 milliamps. We hope this guide has given you some great ideas for your own projects. If you make something cool or just have a question, leave a comment on the article for this video.